Okay, five questions, quick answers. Uh, one simple method. Is there one simple method for assessing coverage? Well, I think if we say, is there one simple method for assessing contact coverage, the simplest method is SLEEK. SLEEK will give you a broad idea of what your coverage is in terms of a classification. Is it high, is it moderate, is it low? And it will give you some barriers data, and it's quick and it's cheap. Um, the next question is field level. If I'm, a, if I'm, a, if I'm uh, at the field level and I'm managing a program, what would be the coverage method to use? The answer is squeak. And the answer is to be doing bits of the squeak toolbox on a continuous basis. One of the things that Squeak does is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it gives you ways of looking at your routine program monitoring data that speak to coverage. And so if you're really that interested in monitoring coverage, you're probably very interested in, you're probably very interested in monitoring your performance anyway. And this is just a way of looking at your performance data and trying to make sense of it in terms of coverage. And then you can do maybe on a, on a, on a, on a quarterly or six monthly basis uh, uh, extra squeak activities. But little and often squeak does that. Um, uh, putting sleek and smart together. Um, I, did see, I did see a survey be, while, while uh, a few days ago, Saul sent me a survey from, where was it, Chad? Chad, done by UNICEF, where they'd attempt to put squeak and smart together. Um, I don't know that can be done. The problems are, I think, that, that, that the SMART uses a PPS sampling method, and that will, by nature, place the sample in the most populous communities. And if you're assessing coverage in the most populous communities, you're probably assessing coverage where it's likely to be most highest, because this is where the health centres are. Uh, and so that will bias it. The other one is the limited sample size. So if we take the SMART manual, the, smart, the biggest sample size mentioned in the SMART manual is just over 500 uh, children. Um, that would mean, with a prevalence of 1%, that you would have a sample size of five SAM cases over your entire survey area. At 2%, 10 SAM cases. There's not much you can do with 10 SAM cases. So I'm skeptical. Uh, I'd like to see the methodological appendices to, uh, to the report, to the, the Wide Area Smart Survey, just to see what they've done. But I'm sceptical that that can be done. Um, how do I access coverage in unstable situations? Well, the real question is, how do I get coverage in unstable situations? <laughs> yeah? How do I assess coverage? I think you're going to have to pull apart the Squeak toolbox. And in the Squeak toolbox, there's lots of little tools that you can do. Small-scale surveys, small-scale studies. Uh, examination of routine program data, maybe putting in a little bit of data collection at the clinic level. Um, but some of the squeak toolbox will help you. It won't, you know, it, it will help you do that. You, you, you won't get complete information, but you'll get some information that will be useful to you. And the other question I was asked about cause analysis within squeak. Um, this came about because uh, UNICEF Sudan had done uh, lots of cause analysis using something called a, a problem tree approach, or you know, which is basically a lot of people sit in a room and uh, talk bollocks for a long time. Oh, that's what we're doing. Um, uh, 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 you know, I'm not averse to talking bollocks for a long time, but the trouble is, is that is that you get a lot of usual suspects. You've got a lot of garbage out, and sometimes, sometimes you go to one place, and uh, you know, Pakistan, for example, or Sierra Leone. And the answer is, the mothers are stupid sluts. Well, obviously, that's not a cause analysis of SAM. Yeah? That's a prejudice by the medical system. Yeah? So problem tree analysis can't take you very far. Now, in Squeak, what we do is we, we need to get good case-finding questions. And to get good case-finding questions, we ask about who gets SAM, what happens to these children before they become wasted. So we have some form of causal etiologic analysis, we take histories, and we, what are the names we use? So, for example, sometimes in, in Niger, you go to a place and, and they'll use the word Tamoa. What's Tamoa? Tamoa is jardiasis. Yeah? Or you go to Ghana and they say, they use the word kwashiorkor. What is kwashiorkor? A child pushed from the breast due to poor birth spacing. So, in the words themselves, there are causal components. And so the idea was is that we would do causal components. We would look at use in, in, within squeak, nest within squeak, a cause analysis. And not to go into great detail, that the cause analysis is that we are finding cases, we have some causal framework, we have some causal ideas, we have enough to produce a case control study questionnaire. 
We're finding cases anyway for our coverage assessment, and so we take neighbourhood controls, age, sex, neighbourhood match controls, and do a match case control study. We've done this in three locations, uh, and uh, the last time I think it was published in The Lancet, um, and it's, it gives the limitations to the method, but it gives you some m more thorough, more objective, more quantitative, more credible data about causality in your area. <laughs> it can be done. Hello, uh, thank you very much for all the questions. I'm just going really, really briefly through them. Uh, I'm just going to read the questions because I think they're very interesting. First one says, uh, what has been done to document how program managers have used various data to adapt their programs? <laughs> Not much. We are going to do it. If you give us some time, we will do it. So check on uh, www.coveragemonitoring.org in 2014. Next question is about the awareness barrier. Is it really that we don't allocate means to this, or is it that we don't have adequate social marketing tools to effectively engage with the communities, with the communities we want to assist? I know who has asked this question. Can I ask who has asked this question? Can I ask your name? Eric. Eric. Uh, I'm going to put that on the wall. And, well, Eric. The wall is yours. Defend it. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a very interesting question, but uh, I think it goes very well on the wall for many of the things that we've been discussing. Uh, next question goes, going from local to national coverage, how, when, why? I think uh, Mark answered this question in his last slide uh, quite well. He explained where were the resources, where were the different capabilities for doing that, and why we should do it. <laughs> so just go back to, to, that, uh, to that question. And uh, I have a lot of uh, all more, more other questions, but I think uh, if you get through me uh, through the data, very specific, I can answer, I can answer that in, okay. a, in any other moment. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank you, Jose Luis. Ernest. Um, I, I think I, I, I put together the questions into four themes. I think that one of the key themes that had the lots of the questions will be the details of the SRM. I don't think I have the time to, to get to that. So catch me in a smaller group uh, probably after this discussion and we can talk, uh, as, uh, if we can, the details through it. Um, the second theme will be about the add-on things we put into it uh, on top of the coverage survey. Uh, specifically, there's a question about the IYCF and whether we're using um, so-called standard indicators and I think we've been very open about this, and uh, what, what we use is actually uh, what, what we call the, what's been called as the infant child feeding index, primarily for the six to 23 month old children. Uh, this is based on work by Arimond and Ruel. And the main, two main um, reasons why we use this is one, again, keeping it simple, the simplicity of it, it's very clear to do, um, can get the indicators quite, quite easily. Second, this is a hierarchical. We, we can easily see how each of the indicators bring about the, the total uh, indicator of good practice. That's, that's what we believe. You know? On the third side of it is that it works well in small sample sizes. Um, it, it can be easily integrated over on, on top of a, of a coverage survey because we can work with small sample sizes at, at every sampling point. Having said that, that's the same principles we think of every time whenever we add on an, another set of indicators. How will this work at the triangle level? Again, the, the whole idea of the triangle, which is another question that's been brought up. Um, how can we make this indicator work at the triangle level? What kinds of sample sizes we're looking at? What kinds of populations uh, we're looking at at the triangle level? And then um, seeing whether the, the indicator itself will uh, lend itself to, that, uh, to those requirements. For the most part, the, the, the types of indicators that we've looked at uh, are, are standard WASH indicators, for example. Um, IYCF is there. Um, we've done, uh, recently we've done some uh, um, foray into poverty assessment types of indicators. Um, antenatal care, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's, there's, there's things uh, that, that, that can be looked at. And again, it's always about development. And, I think that's a key message uh, I want to express is that, as Mark said, 
it is still a product in development, you know? and and um, and a lot of the things we put into it, we we put a lot of thought uh, uh, as to whether they will work or not work, and and uh, we 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 do that every time as as we go and and do this in the trials that we've been doing so far. Um, the third question, I think there were two questions about the triangles. How does that come about, etc.? It's a detail, but I'd, I'd just like to give some time to it. Uh, just the idea, if, if you think of it in terms of the CSAS, where it's the, it's the quadrats or the squares that you sort of report on um, uh, uh, as a unit of measure of area in that, in that to overall area, in, in SRM, it's, it's every sampling point represents a certain uh, um, um, area that, of which the, 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 the results are representative of. And then if you put three of those points together, they contribute to that triangle, triangular area in terms of their data. And I think that's a, a, a good uh, thing to come away with because the, the, that in it, that we think that that's what contributes to the efficiencies of the method in terms of uh, sampling. Um, uh, compared to CSAS where it's just one sampling point where you're getting your information from, in, 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 in the triangle method in, in, in SRM, it's actually three points that's actually contributing to your uh, sample size per triangle. Um, at the same time, every sampling point is contributing to other triangles as well. So there's some, some clever um, uh, reuse of data. Lastly, I think uh, in general, and, and a lot of the new things that, that was shared by, uh, uh, right now on the table is weaknesses. Again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a method in development. Um, one thing that stood out quite quite well in the in the coverage mapping is the idea that when we miss certain points, there, there's there's a, a, a missed opportunity to map uh, because we can't say anything about that. The triangle can only be a triangle if there's three points. We lose a point, then we lose that triangle. There can be retriangulation done, but again, every time we retriangulate, we lose the whole. Um, uh, uh, we potentially lose the shape by which we want that triangle to be at, which is as, as small as possible, as squat as possible. So, so there, there, is, there will always be losses because of loss of sampling point. And this is critical, more, more especially for coverage, because there will always be instances where a sampling point will not have a SAM case. It's, it's possible. Uh, but, but for universal uh, uh, indicators such as, um, again, IOICF or uh, vaccine coverage, for example, there will always be a child under two or there will always be a child under five. So the sampling point will stay and that's why you saw the mapping for, for those indicators are quite, uh, uh, is maintained uh, as planned. Other comments here, I think they're not questions, they're comments uh, and, and, and they're point well taken. Uh, you should not reinvent the wheel, inspire yourself from smart report model, data quality, et cetera, uh, for, for quality measurement. De definitely, I mean, again, uh, uh, building on things, learning from things, quality is important, uh, so that, that's, that's well taken. Um, uh, someone commented on the use of cost effectiveness. Uh, my apologies for that. I know cost effectiveness term, knowledge itself, is quite loaded. It means something very specific, and I know that's not what, what we were showing. Um, uh, we, we did do a, a sort of a, a basic comparison with CSAS and, and SRAM in that uh, uh, Wolita experiment. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if it's the best comparison, but it, it, it does say it, it I think it, it tells us something. You know? um, if, if we want to do more testing of, of how it, one uh, uh, assesses coverage differently from the SRM, then obviously we can, we can start looking into that. And then other, other I, I, again, a lot of comments about uh, not, not new, doing a new thing. Let's go to Robert when you come back. Thank you, Ernest. I want to just go to Robert. Yeah, I just had one uh, compelling question about the, the cross-border issue of uh, ma management of severe acute malnutrition between Maradi and northern Nigeria. And uh, this, is, this is a very important question. Uh, when, when, when first there was reports of Nigerians coming across the border to get free access to, to health care, management of severe acute malnutrition, uh, that um, Nigeria responded by saying, well, there's also Nigerian across the border coming south. <laughs> and so it turns into a little bit of match. But um, there's definitely 
the cross-border issues, no doubt. And um, in this room, we probably have several people that can answer this question better than I can. We have uh, MSF, ACF, and Save the Children, all working in Katsina, Jigawa, and Zamfara states. Um, so, but uh, you look at the 24% coverage estimate in Mara D region, and that does not take into account the, the cross-border issues. That is the estimate of that area. Yeah. So then you have the, um, the new admissions of about 100,000 in Maradi for that year, 2011. Let's say you have 10% cross, uh, patients crossing the border, and that really doesn't make that much of a difference in, 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 in the equations. But uh, so, so there's, a lot of, there's a lot of questions that this brings up, but that doesn't, we don't have a lot of answers. But that area is quite rich. There's a tremendous amount of data there. And if we are able to build a nice analysis framework, it might be based on all of the data that we can get between, between, between the, the people working in Maradi and, uh, and just south in Zempara, Jigawa, and Katsina. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. I think that's a really good way to, to sort of end emphasizing that, you know, we have, as we've heard, we have some amazing tools that have been developed, but they're continuing to be developed um, and continuing to evolve. Um, and that frameworks to, to bring these different pieces of information together uh, are, are really critical now. Um, thank you, um, wonderful presenters um, and panel. And thank you for bearing with us. We have gone over time, but it really is the crux of things. So I don't really apologize for going over time because I think we needed to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tanya and panel. Let's give a round of applause.